October 2020 witnessed a historic dance between NASA's spacecraft OSIRIS-REx and the near-Earth asteroid Bennu. Like a cosmic ballet, the spacecraft gracefully descended upon Bennu, capturing a piece of ancient history in the form of rock and dirt. Safeguarding this precious cargo, OSIRIS-REx embarked on its homeward journey in May 2021. And now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Today could be the day we welcome back this interstellar traveler and its otherworldly treasures. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we'll be talking about OSIRIS-REx. So let's begin. In 2016, NASA launched the OSIRIS-REx to rendezvous with the asteroid Bennu. It's a mission to receive a sample from an asteroid, the reason being that asteroids are remnants from the early solar system that have been preserved in space for billions of years. And this means that asteroids can provide invaluable information about the conditions and processes that existed during the formation of our solar system and of the planets. Organic compounds, the building blocks of life, have been found in meteorites, which are essentially asteroids that have fallen to the Earth. It may well be that asteroids play a role in delivering organic compounds to the early Earth and could harbour resources that could be used to support life in space. If not that, then asteroids can also contain rare and precious metals that could be a valuable source of resources for future space exploration missions and asteroid mining. Now, tens of thousands of meteorites land on the Earth every year. So you might be thinking, why do we need to spend $800 million on getting a small piece of rock? 60 grams to be exact. Well, when asteroids enter our atmosphere, the air resistance heats up the rock to thousands of degrees Celsius. Many won't even make it to the ground, disintegrating altogether. And then many end up in the oceans or in the deserts where it's difficult to recover. But those that are recovered will have changed their original composition and structure in the process. Asteroid Bennu is not the first sample return mission from an asteroid. In 2010, Japanese mission Hayabusa brought back a piece of asteroid Itokawa. And then a decade later in 2020, Hayabusa 2 brought back a piece of asteroid Ryugu, which by the way, it can be seen at the British Science Museum. But these asteroids will all have very different chemical and physical properties. Scientists found a wide variety of organic molecules in the Ryugu samples, including amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. This suggests that asteroids like Ryugu could have played a role in delivering the organic matter that was necessary for the origin of life on Earth. The samples also showed that the grains in Ryugu were formed at very high temperatures, above 1000 degrees Celsius, meaning that they formed close to the sun but later migrated to the outer solar system. Studying many different types of asteroids will let us know about the diversity and distribution of things like water in the solar system. So OSIRIS-REx was launched in 2016, but it didn't approach the asteroid Bennu until 2018. And from there, it spent another two years probing the asteroid, mapping it for a suitable landing spot. Actually, a fun fact is that Dr. Brian May, the guitarist from the rock band Queen, was one of the scientists who developed the 3D mapping to create the images of the surface. He's recently published a book with these stereoscopic photos in. In 2020, the spacecraft finally successfully landed on the asteroid and it scooped up a stash of the treasure. But supposedly, they lost some of it because they were trying to be too greedy. The flap that should have closed the sampler head was jammed open by very large rocks. Thankfully, NASA are confident that they have between 400 grams and one kilograms of the sample material, well in excess of the 60 grams that they were aiming for. In comparison, the Ryugu sample was just 5.4 grams, so about the weight of a penny. In 2021, OSIRIS-REx headed back to Earth with its stash of asteroid treasure. And if all goes to plan sometime later today, it will eject the capsule carrying it to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and parachute down. Bennu was chosen for the OSIRIS-REx mission because it's a primitive asteroid that's thought to contain a wealth of information about the early solar system and also potential origins of life. It's a B-type asteroid, which is the subtype of the carbonaceous C-type asteroids. 
carbonaceous asteroids are considered to be the most primitive type of asteroid. They're thought to have changed very little geologically since they formed, and this means that they might contain well-preserved samples of materials from the very early solar system. Also, Bennu is a near-Earth asteroid, which means that it comes relatively close to Earth in its orbit and makes a relatively easy target for us to reach. But there's loads of other reasons to target Bennu too, like it's a big asteroid making it easy to access, and it doesn't rotate too fast or too slow, which would make studying the asteroid much more complicated. Once the samples land on the ground, OSIRIS-REx will be renamed OSIRIS Apex, and it's going to dart off towards its next target, another near-Earth and potentially hazardous asteroid 99942 Apophis. On the other hand, the Bennu sample will be recovered and distributed to research labs all over the place, where they'll undergo a range of analyses, including studying their meteorology, chemistry, isotopic compositions, organic content, and physical properties. So we can learn about the early solar system and the origins of organic molecules, the history of Bennu, and much more. Since Hayabusa 2 and OSIRIS-REx missions were so similar, NASA and JAXA actually signed an agreement to swap some samples so that they can make cross-comparisons between the two samples, Ryugu and Bennu. But early solar system science isn't the only thing we can learn here. Since Bennu is so close to Earth, it's potentially hazardous. Understanding its properties could help develop strategies to deflect or mitigate the impact of similar asteroids in the future. We can hope to map the potential resources available on similar asteroids for future asteroid mining, and the entire mission has given us experience in terms of navigation, sample collection, and operations around a small celestial body, which is invaluable to future missions to other asteroids, moons, and planetary bodies. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. Fingers crossed the touchdown goes well. As always, thanks to my YouTube Perk members for supporting. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.